Hello Cornerstone, great to have this opportunity to talk to you again in this pastoral update. Um, first off, I just want to say how great it was for us to be together on Sunday live. Uh, it was good and uh, it was useful to kind of shoot the videos from our home, but far better being in the auditorium at Bedford View. Also great to have a few of those who were helping, the, some of the elders and deacons were helping with the videoing and the recording of the meeting on Sunday, but it was great having them there and uh, really just thoroughly enjoyed taking a little bit of ground and we soon hope uh, that we'll see that kind of move to a place where we can uh, eventually get back to meetings. I just want to remind us that uh, prayer will go out live um, on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. We're doing it at 6.30 to cater for some of the other sites uh, whose prayer never began at 6 o'clock. So it just suits everyone for 6.30. And then Sunday mornings will be at 9.30 a.m. Uh, we do have one of the sites that is going to go to two meetings on a Sunday morning to accommodate uh, their folk because they don't have access to data or to uh, any kind of device that can stream video. So we're going to see how that goes, but uh, we very definitely are kind of looking at each of the sites differently uh, to see how best we can serve the people of those sites, how best we can conduct our meetings and that. It was a, a wonderful opportunity to be back together again. So I thought for the sake of this, instead of carrying on with that mini-series on faithfulness, we'd look at this issue of, of Christian workers, you know, elders, deacons, whoever they are, being considered an essential service. Let me read a passage of scripture, 1 Peter chapter 5. So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. So I want to put some handles on what it means for us as Christian workers to be an essential service during uh, this lockdown. And of course, linking it in closely, because that's where we get it from, the scriptures. Uh, our understanding of what pastoring is all about. So firstly, we can travel about delivering food and help to those in need. Very grateful for that. I'm glad all of those restrictions are being lifted because we need to get the food to those that need it. And if you know any of your neighbors or you have friends or family or whatever it is that need, please let us know uh, because uh, Cornerstone is a generous church and you know a lot of finance has come in uh, and guys are willing to kind of contribute to those kind of things. Secondly, we can go into the office and meet for the sake of admin, prayer, planning, and pastoral duties. So, and we follow all the right protocols. We've got a system. We take our temperatures. We uh, fill in the register. Uh, we wash our hands regularly and so on and obey all the protocols of social distancing. But we can do that, and we have been doing that for the past uh, couple of days. And then we can use our venue to re record and broadcast uh, the various prayer meetings like we have been doing and preachers as well. And then the one that I want to speak a little bit about now is we can carry out our normal pastoral duties. This will be a refresher and also an understanding of what eldership is all about. Uh, so we can counsel you with God's word. Um, I know we've all had to dig deep wells. We've had to rely on our, um, our own uh, depth of relationship with the Lord, our own reading of Scripture, which is right. All of that's right. But if we understand um, Peter speaking to the church in his letter, it's shepherd the flock. And so part of shepherding is counseling you with the Word of God. We, you know, uh, the times we are going through are very challenging, and we want to help. Uh, we know people are gripped with fear and depression. You know, stuff is happening where guys are losing jobs and there is the kind of panic of what this uh, pandemic could cause. So we're, we're available to counsel. You can come and visit us here at the office or uh, we can go and visit you at home. 
So, but remember the key behind counseling, which is all about shepherding, it's we want to build you into the relational life of this local church. This local church has got an incredible network of relationships worked out in life groups, uh, people caring for people, deacons caring for people. And for us, top prize is that every single one is worked into a life group. So our kind of job as pastors is we want to integrate you and we want you to find some kind of function, even now with lockdown, uh, get you praying for others, get you caring for other people as well. Okay, the second thing when it comes to pastoral duties is praying for you and praying with you. James 5 verse 13, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. And so part of pastoral care, we see it in the life of Jesus, we see it in the life of Paul, and it's an obvious one, is we want to, we want to pray with you and we want to pray for you. So, of course, we're praying for you. We're praying over all those who are part of this local church. And I want to encourage you to pray for each other, pray for the leaders, pray for the government. Uh, that's how we handle matters in the kingdom. As, uh, even though we get frustrated, we get concerned, uh, and so on, we handle them in prayer. We always have a way to represent the heaviness in our heart, or even the joy. When we feel in that elation of joy, then we pray and we say thank you to God. But in this case... If there are any that are sick and suffering and going through difficulties, get hold of us. We want to pray for you. And again, you can either come in or we can go and visit you at home. The restrictions are being lifted for us um, as Christian workers, as pastors. And so the essential services, we can travel to your house and we can come and pray with you. And then um, kind of the last one is helping you in any way pastorally. Uh, you know, we want to if you want to know about a Bible reading program, if you want to kind of have suggestions about Bible study or you want to kind of ask about help in any area, we want to come alongside you and we want to help you with that. And so when it comes to fulfilling the call that is on our life, we have a green light from the government. We practice all the proper protocols, of course. We can't lay hands on you physically. Uh, but we can pray with you, come and stand with you in prayer and trust God for healing to take place, restoration to take place. And so I want to encourage you, please get hold of us um, at info at cornerstonechurch.co.za. Coming up on the screen as well will be our WhatsApp number. You, you can get hold of us there. So we want to follow up on that. So even though we're in lockdown, don't think we still locked down. We can travel around. We can help. We can kind of come alongside you in any way possible. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to ask David to give a report on what's going on with our young people, with the youth. Um, they, in a very unique way, are still going and the momentum seems to be picking up. Uh, and he'll fill you in with some of those details. Hello everyone, it's David here. Um, I have the awesome privilege to lead Rev Youth here at Cornerstone Church with Andrea, my wife. Um, and I want to just give you a little bit of what we are doing at the moment and the journey that we've been on with the guys online. Uh, firstly, we did start with posting a whole bunch of different teachings and encouragement from our team, which has been really great. The guys would uh, watch it online and then each live group will meet um, on a Zoom call or Google Hangout or wherever was easiest for them. Um, and then after that, we all felt to uh, carry on with our Alpha course. Alpha is mainly about asking very significant questions about our faith, our belief, things that we stand for. And a lot of times it's like questions that even people are asking us and we don't even know how to answer them. Um, we've discussed um, how to have faith, how to pray when sometimes we don't know if there is going to be an answer or not. Uh, this last week we spoke about the Spirit and who is the Holy Spirit to us. Uh, this coming Friday, we're going to be speaking about um, having a new life in Jesus. What does that mean? Can my life have a purpose or not? Uh, I do want to encourage you that if you are a teenager or if you know of any, please invite them. We do meet every Friday at 4 o'clock. 
um, and we get together on a Zoom call, we watch the video together and it's a really great time for them to connect. Uh, then we split into small groups onto the actual call, get to discuss a lot of different things on a very personal level. And then what happens afterwards is that us as leaders, we get hold of the guys, we try to follow up with them. We've been having a lot of teenagers that are really interested. Guys are inviting the girlfriends and the girlfriends are inviting the boyfriends and it's been awesome. Um, so when we get together, we get to be real, we get to ask questions and even for people that don't even believe in Jesus, they get to be part of this um, and we journey together from there after. And I want to encourage you that our heart in this is that we want to um, invite every teenager in the season that we're in of uncertainty, of not knowing what the future looks like. We'll do our best to connect online. And if we have to, I'm really happy to even connect with some of them if we need to, to counsel or to pray with them or uh, just encourage them in the season that we're in. Um, the way forward is that we're going to carry on with Alpha for the coming four weeks. Um, after that, we um, are going to continue with our teachings. We will still be posting something every Tuesday uh, that the guys can go back to at any time and discuss with their life group leaders. Uh, we love the young people. I will do this for the rest of my life if I can. And I know the team that are working to uh, disciple and to work with the guys feel the same. Um, we are continuing to pray for you young guys and, and girls. Uh, and we just trust that God is going to continue to equip us in the season that we're in, that this young generation is going to continue to love Jesus and be excited about the things of the kingdom. Um, it's an honor to be doing this together. Thank you. Thanks, David. Um, I'm encouraged by what God is doing with our young people. Uh, we'll get a full report from children's ministry as well, and you'll see even in that area, uh, under lockdown, things are growing and flourishing. So please, if you do have any teenagers, encourage them to kind of get hold of us. Uh, we'd like to include them in what we're doing and keep praying for that age as well. Uh, we want to see them grow and flourish and accomplish all that God has for them. I just want to remind us of a date that has been set. Key Women Online on the 27th of June from 7 to 8. Coffee and Connect. There'll be a speaker be an opportunity to uh, be ministered to and encouraged and have vitally needed fellowship. So let's pray together. Um, I want to say again, get all of us as elders, we love you. Uh, we really want to be there for you. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the lifting of the restrictions uh, over Christian workers that we are an essential service. We know it from scripture. Uh, and we, we just pray that across the country, Christian workers would be responsible, and that, Lord, um, there would be a, a, an incredible um, result that comes out of all of this as the flock is cared for, and also as your kingdom grows. And so I pray over Cornerstone, I pray over all of our people, I pray over everyone that is going through challenging times right now, that you'd comfort hearts, you'd strengthen, you'd be our provider, you'd be our protector, Lord. And then we commit to you the very front end of what you called us to do is that we'd continue to be a, a forward-moving apostolic people, reaching out to our community with the love of Christ. Help us all pray that way and expect to be used in that way, to speak to others about Jesus. We pray for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.